हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू रेडियो एक्सप्रेस आई एम परेश नाइक पी एन टी सर्जन विद स्पेशल इंटरेस्ट इन राइनोलॉजी कल बेस एंड हेड एंड नेक टूडे लेट्स सी वॉट डू वी हैव वी हैव अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग स्कैन लाइक ऑल आर अदर वीडियोज आई ट्राई टू कीप द वीडियो शॉर्ट एज द रिटेंशन स्पैन इज लेस दैन ट्वेंटी मिनट्स वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ लुक एट अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग स्कैन एंड this particular finding is often missed this is a ct scan of mrs abc who presented with bilateral nasal discharge and facial pain endoscopic examination turbinates were enlarged here is the ct scan i am going to repeat the same statement again white is bone black is air anything in between is not bone and air so as we move further the first thing we start noticing is the eye on the left side okay so what does this mean this means that when the patient was having its ct scan maybe the patient was slightly turned towards one side that is the images are rotated okay so in such cases uh, you may have little bit of asymmetry but you don't need to worry about it so as we advance the first thing that we see is the frontal sinus quite obvious and there is a septa dividing it into right and left we move further and you can see the inferior turbinates i am going to use this ellipticals to identify or point out the structures that i am talking about So these are the inferior turbinate as you can see that the left eye is almost completely seen however we have not even started seeing the right eye this is the thing i was saying about uh, the person may be slightly tilted and we have got a twisted image you don't need to worry about it as we are moving further that is from anterior to posterior posterior that is from front to back the next thing that you can see is this this is the nasolacrimal duct can you see how this traverses and opens in the inferior meatus just underneath the inferior turbinate so one of the things is whenever you want to do uh, any surgery to the inferior turbinate out fracture one of the methods of doing the out fracture ring is you first in fracture and then out fracture that is you place your hills elevator or fraser elevator in this area push it this side then put your elevator in this area that is medial to the inferior turbinate and lateral to the septum and push it outwards by this movement you are fracturing the inferior turbinate we should take care not to cause much injury in, in this area nothing happens at that time but later on it can cause fibrosis and obstruction so that's one uh, finding now i am just going to focus on this important thing we did mention that uh, as the person is slightly twisted there is asymmetry however i want to bring at this level of scan and see can you see the right maxillary sinus compare with the left don't you think this sinus looks like a pediatric sinus although this is an adult scan you can also notice this ledge of the inferior turbinate so it is way far from the body of the inferior turbinate this ledge is almost always present in this finding the medial wall of the maxillary sinus is pushed laterally 
So for junior surgeons, I would like to add this point. You know, whenever you start seeing any scan, okay, I'll give you a small tip. Even if you don't know anything, anything about a scan, you don't know any details about any scan, just have a look on the other side. Compare the symmetry. Almost always you will notice that, the, that there is something unusual. Like in this case, you see, this is unusual. Also, you can also notice this air cell as compared to this part, it is unusual. Okay, you see over here, you can see the optic over here, you can still see the eye and that way you can notice that there is slightly rotation of the head. Compare the scans with the other scans, okay, and compare with the other normal findings. Almost always you will be at least be able to identify that there is something abnormal. So if your senior surgeon asks, you can at least say, okay, I find this is abnormal. The right sinus looks smaller than the left side. That's it. So this is the classical case of maxillary sinus hypoplasia. This part as compared to this is smaller. I'm going to roll back to a couple of slides and here I want to show you this area. Okay, we are looking towards the infundibulum and hiatus seminalis. Uh, although in this area, it, there is a slightly haziness in the mucosa, we would have been able to appreciate that there is narrowing of these normal structures. So, maxillary sinus hypoplasia. What do we have? we have something called as Bolger's classification. The overall prevalence of the maxillary sinus hypoplasia is around 10.4% as per the old literature. But again, I would like to say that this is understated because not everyone in the general population undergoes a scan. So only people who are symptomatic or they come to the clinic, they will undergo the scan. So I think this is underrated. Now, what are the types of the Bolger's classification? We have type 1, type 2 and type 3. These are all based on the Uncinet process. In type 1, the is characterized by the normal Uncinet process and a well-defined infundibulum. Okay? There is mild sinus hypoplasia. So, there can be, so what you can do is, at times you can measure this diameter, or oh, sorry, this uh, length from medial to lateral wall and you can compare from the other, on the other side that will be the type 1 type 2 is characterized by the absence or hypoplasia of the uncinate process so in this scan if you can see this can be a type 2 Bolger's classification maxillary sinus hypoplasia I will repeat, it is characterized by absence or hypoplasia of the uncinate process. The infundibulum is ill-defined. There can be soft tissue density around the sinus. So this will be type 2. Type 3, I have got one more interesting scan which I will show you in the uh, one more uh, YouTube video. Type 3 is characterized by absence of uncinate process and a profoundly hypoplastic cleft-like sinus. So we have understood this. Now why is this classification important or why this finding is important? So imagine one of the patients like this undergoes a surgery and you have not noticed this finding. You took, take your instrument and then do try to do a middle meatal antrostomy take a back biter and try to remove the uncinet. After going that, if you are using a suction or a debrider, you are directly exposed to the medial and the inferior wall of the orbit. Okay? And imagine if one start using 45 degree Blakesley or micro debrider, the next thing will be boom or vital fat. You don't want to have that. We need to know this scan and know this finding to avoid 
medial wall or the inferior wall or by tell injury okay the causes of the uh, maxillary sinus hypoplasia can be trauma infection uh, surgery in childhood irradiation if someone is having cancer uh, in their pediatric age group and that time they get radiation the structures won't be developed it is also seen in congenital deformities and syndromes like uh, treacher collins syndrome in treacher collins syndrome it is associated with unilateral maxillary sinus hypoplasia in this condition that is this particular case the patient had multiple courses of antibiotics and nasal sprays still was symptomatic and hence that made me think oh i should get a scan done to know what it is because many times what happens is uh, a patient is not having a chronic rhinosinusitis but is having a benign lesion a benign tumor maybe like inverted papilloma in the nose or a fungal condition in which the ostiums are blocked and that may give rise to runny nose well the patient doesn't understand the patient will come and say that oh i am having runny nose we'll have to know what the finding is because you are going to give medical management optimal medical management and then look that why it's not getting treated maybe think about scan then so what is the today's teaching point is that when the symptoms are exaggerated they are more and when the symptoms are still persistent with medications please consider a ct scan that was today's quick video session hope you have learned something different thank you so much and please do not forget to subscribe like and write your comments below if you want uh, any further suggestions or if you have any doubts or if there is something controversial or you think i have said something wrong please write it down many thanks see you next time in the next video